Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the North Kesteven series. This is a large Lincolnshire district centred around the town of Sleaford. There's 75 parishes here, so let's take a look at one of them. Welcome back to North Kesteven, everybody. Now, this morning I brought you to a place that reminds me a lot of Titchwell in Kings Lynn and West Norfolk. And the reason for that is basically how this one's laid out. It's very similar. It's one long road with a church at one end down a, down a track. That's exactly what Titchwell was. Here is said church. It's a grass track, this. Interesting for parking, I must admit. There is the church right there with a war memorial soldier outside it. There's some Commonwealth war graves in here as well. We'll see if we can find those. We're in the parish of Thirlby. North Kesteven series is sponsored by Gaines Recycles 01427 617 752. For all your cycling needs, this is your one stop shop located at 20 Ropery Road, Gainsborough, or online at gainsrecycles.com. There's a link in the description. Gaines Recycles, ask for Trevor Halstead. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like, and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome back to North Kesteven, folks, and to a village which shouldn't be confused with another Lincolnshire location. This is Thirlby, which lies approximately nine miles southwest of Lincoln. There are two Thirlbys in the Kestevens. The other one is in South Kesteven, so it would be pretty easy to mix them up. As we'll see, though, when we eventually cover its namesake down the road, the two places are quite different. The North Kesteven flavoured parish covers about 1,840 acres, much of which was a large open moor before the 1800s. It doesn't have a lot in the way of features. It's a long, linear village stretching from north to south with a church, a hall, and some communal facilities in the centre. However, the parish also extends out to the west, meaning there's also a rather big landmark or two also within the boundaries. We'll get to them in due course. Thirlby Hall was once the seat of the Brumhead Baronets, and they're the subject of today's special section. Thirlby's churchyard is one of Lincolnshire's main resting places for members of the armed forces. There are no fewer than 56 graves here, 30 of them airmen who died in World War II. Let's go and pay our respects to them and see what else Thirlby has to offer us along the way. Given the time of year, if you're looking for a Christmas tree about now and you haven't yet got one, well, Thirlby might be the place to come. Let's go. We begin this episode with the special section, this week featuring the Brumhead Baronets. Although spelt Bromhead, their surname is pronounced Brumhead. The family lived in Thirlby, more specifically at the early 18th century Thirlby Hall, right next to the church. The baronetcy was created in 1806 for the soldier Lieutenant General Gonville Brumhead. This is his grave in the churchyard. He was the first of six Brumhead Baronets. Sir Edmund de Gonville, the third baronet, became a major in the army and fought at the Battle of Waterloo. I could find no images of him, so instead here's a generic one of the battle. You never know, he might be in there somewhere. His youngest son, pictured here, was also named Gonville Brumhead. He received the Victoria Cross for his part in the defence of Rook's Drift in January 1879. That would lead to a film named Zulu released in 1964 which depicted the battle. Brumhead himself was played by the legendary actor Michael Caine.
We begin our route at the Church of St. Germain, located at the northern end of Thirlby Village, set back from the road on a grass track. A Grade II listed building, St. Germain's dates from mostly the 11th century, although it has a 13th century west tower. Its porch stands over its original Norman doorway. Inside, there's a 15th century font. The church was much restored in the 19th century. It's constructed of coarse and random rubble and contains transitional and early English features, including the south doorway. Thirlby's churchyard, though, is probably more of interest than the church itself. You see here, there's a lot of Commonwealth war graves. A whole section of the churchyard is given over to them. There are 56 of them in total, 30 of them airmen who died in World War II. The other 26 are post-war service graves. Together they make for one of the largest Commonwealth war grave sites in Lincolnshire. Also in the churchyard is a medieval cross, a scheduled monument which was restored in 1842. It's believed this stands in its original position. So that's the church. Now the rest of the village is a simple, long, straight road from north to south. It's nothing much more than that. However, there is something of interest out to the west, which we'll try to catch it later. I'm not going to say I'm for definite that I'm actually going to catch it because I'm not quite sure if there's any access points to it. You'll see what it is later. Let's just deal with the village first, shall we? So first thing to do is to walk down this track, which leads from the church onto the main road over there and see where it takes us. As well as the church, Thirlby Hall can be accessed from this track. That's the house you can see in the distance, ish, here. In front of the hall and the church, there's an extensive patch of earthworks, suggesting medieval dwellings once stood nearby. At the end of the track, you're out onto Haddington Lane. You could count on the fingers of one hand how many houses are on this. Most of them are clustered around this farm, Middle Farm, one of three which are located along the main street. The biggest local business can be found at the Limes. It's a Christmas tree farm named Thirlby Trees. As we hit the centre, we come to a house that has a Victorian post box set into its wall. It's been a while since I found one of these. Thirlby also has a parish notice board, despite being tiny. Mark it off, everyone. 13 down in North Kesteven, 62 to go. The notice board was erected in 1994 for the centenary of the parish meeting. The red phone box next to it houses a defib machine. Then we hit a junction, the only one in Thirlby, where the road bends to the right towards Swinderby and Newark. Continuing towards Bassingham, this building stands in front of Moore Farm. South Farm, Thirlby's third, is dead opposite. The only other notable building now is the old rectory, but that's hidden behind some trees. Other than that, it's all houses. So once you get to this point, the road starts to then taper off into the distance towards Bassingham and any other properties that are down there, I would have caught in the drive in anyway. So now it's time to head back to where I began. Such a simple, small village, this one, isn't it? You threw it in pretty much no time. It's taken me less than 20 minutes to walk from the church to this point right here. I'm going to head back. I'm going to hop into the car. And as I said earlier, we're going to drive to the west now. Now to the west of Thirlby, there are plenty of fishing lakes, big watery type things. I'm not quite sure what they're used for. I'm pretty sure they're for fishing though. I'm not totally sure if I can get access to them to film them. There is a gate off the road where I could potentially stand and show you them, but I'm not 100% confident about this. Um, but it's something to pad this episode out because it is a small episode, as I'm sure you uh, are aware already. So let's go back to the uh, church, get in the car and see how this goes. Out to the west of the village, there's a big slab of countryside, a lot of which is taken up by some dense woodland and at least three lakes. The lakes are to the left hand side of this road behind the trees, and they're not the easiest things to catch a glimpse of. 
Much like other riverside locations locally, they're former sand and gravel pits which have been turned into an angling and water sports venue. One company which uses the lakes would be the Newark Canoe Club, founded in 1991. At that time, Thirlby Lake was still a quarry operated by RMC. In 1997, with the quarry then defunct, the club was given a 10-year lease on the site and from there it's gone from strength to strength. Nearby is the Oak Hill Leisure Park which sits on 8 acres of land that was formerly part of Thirlby Moor. It offers both camping and glamping on a well-drained piece of grassland. With hedging, trees and lakes all around, it almost feels like a secret hideaway and I will always recommend Lincolnshire for a short break. And that'll do us for Thirlby everyone, time to march on down the road to the next one. The next in the series could possibly attract a lot of attention on YouTube. We would normally associate all things Disney with California, Orlando or Paris, but the company wouldn't have come to be without a small village in Lincolnshire first. See you there. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.